We're about to officially begin the 2017 Classic Tetris World Championship. We need yeah. it uh, all together. Let's go. Let's get some energy. Yeah. We're, we're going to count down all together with a big, ready, three, two, one. Three, three two, two, one, go! All right, and we're off. And everybody starting in level 18 is expected. Yeah, the uh, higher seed gets to choose between levels 15 and 18 in round one. Okay, so you'll notice we're trying to avoid any crosstalk. Uh, so if they're making announcements, you won't hear anything from us here. So going into the games, looks like our top match between Matt and Alex. We've got a uh, neck and neck. <laughs> keep, keep counting, everybody. Uh, nice stacks for both players. Down at the bottom, Jin is working on an unconventional center well, but seems to be a, right, a, a pretty close match. Just got a Tetris to take one Tetris lead. Yanni's got a fairly high stack, but he's maintaining. Yeah, some brief notes about our players. Alex has been with us all eight years. Uh, he and he was the second place finisher in the 2011 Classic Tetris World Championship. He's also a Tetris the Grandmaster II Grandmaster. And I believe he was the first person in America to achieve that. And he was a part of our Grandmaster competition yesterday. He went to San Jose State University, and he's a software engineer. That's Alex in the upper right corner. Matt's got an interesting garbage pile to clean up here. Yanni's got a real clean Tetris wall. Boom, Tetris for Yanni. Jin's the underdog here, and she's doing quite well with the center well play. You'll notice the player, right now Yanni's playing perfect Tetris, and that he's sort of got a left to right slope. Boom, Tetris, by the way. And you'll notice the players, when they're really in the zone, they're pushing pieces to the left and creating what we call a double wide well on the right so they can burn the highest variety of pieces while they're waiting for the long bar. And Yanni is really playing that perfectly right now. Matt's down four Tetrises right now, and he's still got some garbage to clean up, so he's got a lot of work ahead of him right now. And Jin's setting up for a Tetris, and only one Tetris behind right now. Yanni's a little more efficient with a six-line deficit. 
playing a little slower, which is amazing. Yanni tends to be an aggressive player. Alex with a very clean wall. Burning efficiently. Matt has cleaned up his mess, so he's back in business. Oh, no, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Tetris for Matt. Now, a Tetris on level 18 is worth about 23,000 points. So if you look at the score differential, for instance, on Matt and Alex, you can do the math real quick and say, oh, Alex is, or Matt's down about five. four or five Tetrises. And that, that's a pretty big deficit. But and, and level 18 is where you have to get your big scores because at level 19 and above, it's more about survival and, and uh, eking your points in when you can. Jin just topped out, and Yanni overtook her score. So the first round of the bottom match is going to go to Yanni. And once again, you'll notice a little heart will fill in below Yanni's name. That's a little homage to the great uh, Zelda, or probably a hundred other games. Punch out. But, uh, our heart filler inner is not here, so when Trey gets back, that heart will fill in. Uh, they can go ahead and proceed with uh, round two. Ooh, Matt's in trouble. Matt just topped out, and that first match will go to Alex. Our, our lower seeds are getting 300,000 points, which mere mortals can't do. I can't do it hardly any anymore. And uh, Brian Kidwell, can we get an update here on the right? Okay. And Corian's up 1-0 to zero against Vince on the side station. Come on, Vince. Once again, Corian's all the way from Japan. He's a computer programmer, and his favorite game is Sonic the Hedgehog. His favorite game that's not Tetris is Sonic the Hedgehog. He's a kaiju on the side, right? Okay. And uh, Jake, whenever you can, just point at the person who wins round one of that match. Okay, so we can start these matches on the stage whenever you're ready. If you want a countdown, you want a quick countdown? Okay, for the stage, three, two, one, go. And once again, Yanni was our two, 2016 Classic Tetris European champion, and that, that competition takes, takes place in Copenhagen. I want to give a shout out to Christopher and Emmy who put that competition on. They do a great job. And they do the exact same format that we do, except they use PAL Tetris, which is slightly different, but it looks the same. And I believe Yanni holds the record on PAL. That video of him playing at level 19, which is the max out level, is wild. Yeah, Yanni's known for his ability to play at very high speeds, at very high levels. And he is one of the only players to have achieved level 30 on NTSC Tetris, along with, of course, Thor Ackerlin and now Corian. The club keeps growing. The pool keeps getting better. Yanni with a center wheel build up and a one Tetris deficit. Jin is hanging in there. Boom, Tetris for Jin. Nice clean wall. All players have found a groove. Looks like we have a victory over here. Uh, Brian, if you could signal. All right, Corian has advanced to round two. Uh, good job, Vince. Better luck next year. So you finished 33rd. Would you rather be here or out there facing Corian? Gosh, that's a great question. <laughs> I, I, it's true. I was the quote-unquote bubble boy this year, meaning I was uh, one place out of getting into the seeds. And uh, it would have been an honor to play Corian, so I would have loved to have done that. Yeah. Good answer. Right, we got some close matches here on the stage. Everyone seemed to have found their rhythm. Matt's experiencing a bit of a long bar drought. Boom, Tetris. And now Alex uh, experiencing the same drought. And boom, Tetris. So they both handled the drought well. 
reminder that um, both players are receiving the same pieces, so the droughts are going to happen with both players. Yanni just had a short drought. So Chris, on that NES remix, uh, yes. what was the score you had to score to uh, be the finalist in, where was it, in Cincinnati? Chicago. Chicago. There was only eight cities. I had to go six, drive six hours and uh, sleep in a Best Buy parking lot to oh. participate. It was quite fun in the rain. Um, at the time, I won with a 2.98 million, and in the two years since, I've increased my high score to 17 million, which is the current record. So it, the, the competition's grown quite a lot, even past the competition when fewer people care about the game. There's no stakes. And how, how big of a Dr. Mario combo did you have to pull off to get that score? I, on level 3, there are 16 viruses. I had to get a chain of 14 of those 16, and I broke the game. It froze on me, <laughs> and it, the scoring mechanic broke, and that's how I got the extra couple million to push me over the top. But uh, uh, officially, it still counts, but... We know if the code is wrong, that's not the player's fault, that's the programmer's fault. Just another reminder that we are surrounded by falling block masters, you guys. <laughs> there's, there's never been an assemblage like this. It's just incredible. Eight Tetris Grand Masters yesterday, and now the greatest NES players in the world. Of course, our six-time champion Jonas Neubauer is here. Uh, the only other person to have won, Harry Hong's here. Just incredible. And... Thor Ackerlin, the great one, is here at the expo, and he'll be joining us later, and perhaps we can even get a chance to interview him. That would Hopefully, be yeah. Um, his story should be out there. The more people that know it, the better. Okay. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Okay, we're going to call some more matches to the side stations. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next bracket. Uh, I want to call up Bo Style and Paul Tessie to the side stations, as well as a mysterious... New entrant named Hauser. Hauser to the side station. And he's going to be going up against Greg Vandervelden. And, and Jake. Uh, I take it Ben Mullen won his match? Yeah, okay. All right. Congratulations to Ben Mullen on advancing to the second round. And uh, Stacy, thanks for competing. You did amazing, and uh, better luck next year. All right, as you can see, Matt has transitioned to 19. Our first transition on stage. And now Alex has transitioned to 19. Jen is also there. Everybody's Yanni will be there, and one more Boom. Tetris. 19 Tetris for Alex. Looking good. Yeah, any Tetrises you can get at this point are... That's the key to winning at this at this high level. Oh, that's in a little bit of trouble. trouble. And Alex has advanced to round two in our 16-17 matchup. All right, good job, Matt. Thanks for coming out. And and Jen has topped out. She's 69,000 points ahead. So Yanni will have a chance to overtake that score to take the match. Looks like he's gonna play a conservative route, just take some doubles to make that 60,000 point deficit. Yeah, that's a, you know, a little over two Tetrises, but you can single and double and stay low and play it safe. So Concentration matters in a five round tournament like this as well, so you don't want to over concentrate and use all your energy early on. So uh, we have an empty spot on the stage. Let's go ahead and call up Chris Brady and Rigel Pierce. Brady also participated in the Dr. Mario Championship in Pittsburgh past summer, made the final eight. Appreciate him coming out to the tournament. Yanni's got 20,000 points to go. But he's got a clean board. He should be able to knock this out. Jin put up a solid score. Getting a 450 in competition is no easy feat. But Yanni is a champion. About 1,000 points per single line at this point, so 10 singles or one Tetris will finish it up. 8,000 to go. Still clean. T 
Takes Jin is the looking, double. Jin is looking very graceful watching the, the end here, taking taking it like a champ. One more to go. Uh, there it is. All right, and Yanni takes the match. So Yanni advances to round two. Congratulations, Yanni. And Jin, thanks so much for coming. You did amazing, and better luck next year. Um, All right, so Chris and Rigel are going at it. Rigel is from the local area. He's been with us for several years. So stage next, is next we'll bring up to the stage Joey Parker. Oh, wait. No. Eli. Scratch that. Eli Markstrom and from Japan, SQR to the stage. All right, Chris and Rigel are about to get started here any minute. It looks like Rigel's personal best is around 737,000, and Chris Brady has achieved multiple max outs. Okay, so from here on out, we're just going to get the matches started as soon as possible, so we'll just keep everyone updated on what's happening. So in the bottom right of the screen, oh. All right, and we're back. Okay, up top, like we said, we've got Rigel from the local area. We've got Chris Brady. From Philly. From Philly. Rocky. And it's like Chris Brady went to the University of Connecticut with a BA in English, and he works as a proposal analyst. He practices about enough to have developed a unified field theory. That's how much he practices Tetris. Changing it up here with a level the, fi the level 15 start. The lower seed gets to pick in the second match. Chris is already up one round at zero. It's still significantly fast. It's a uh, they drop one level per four frames at level 15 as opposed to one block per three frames at level 18. 
That's right. In these first two rounds, the players do have the choice to play on 15 or 18. Uh, once we get to the top eight, it's mandatory 18 start. As it should be. We've got a solid pace here down on the bottom. We've got a couple of heavy hitters down on the bottom, you guys. Eli was the third place finisher, I believe, in 2012. And he's done some damage in every tournament he's appeared in. He's a very good live player. He's very focused. He has, um, he's an athlete. At, uh, the, I believe it's sort of a CrossFit regimen that he does. So he brings that intensity to Tetris. And over here on the left, we have SQR, who is also from Japan. And he was a finalist in our Tetris Grandmaster tournament yesterday. So he's a multidisciplinary Tetris master. All right, we just got word that Hauser, the mysterious new contestant Hauser, did win his match in advance of round two. Congratulations to Hauser. And next up, we're going to bring to the side station... Next up, we're going to bring up Harry Hong and Douglas Arcady to the side. That's Harry Hong and Douglas Arcady. Please come to the side station. Over on the bottom match, SQR just cleared out some garbage and has a nice well on the right side and has a uh, half a Tetris lead, playing about the same pace. Oh, no, maybe about a slightly faster for Eli, but very close match. Anybody can take it at this point, but they're heading toward the transition, so they want to keep the stacks fairly low with the increase in speed. Rigel at the chop is in trouble, but since it is level 15, it's going to be a little easier to get out of it, and it looks like he might get out of it yet. Chris is cruising along with a four Tetris lead. Anytime you play this high, it's always a little bit dangerous. But you have multiple burns. He's got his wall set up properly. And as you can see, he can take care of a lot of problems with this position. And a 25 drought over there for Rigel. Quite a drought. With the Q Oh, and there's a straight piece, and he had to use it to burn a line. All right, there he goes. He's safe again. Okay, we just got word that Bo has advanced to round two on the side station. Good work, Bo. And Paul, it was a pleasure to have you. Good work. Congrats on making the finals first time. And next we're going to bring to the side stage Frank Westfall and the one and only Jeff Moore. And down here, Eli has advanced to 19. Oh, Super no. close match. Slight misdrop, but he T-spins nice, to nice clean it up. Spin. Excellent T-spin. Only have three frames to nail that. Level 19 is all about keeping your head when you make a mistake, which is really hard to do. And SQR has a, a bit of an issue on the right side. Just able to slip that L in there. Oh, that might do it. it, it, it They're going to need some very... Oh, there it is. That's Ooh. it for SQR. Eli has a 24,000-point deficit to overtake. One Tetris will take care of that. And you saw, I believe SQR lost his dash charge. And the dash charge is when you hold the piece down and the piece starts moving immediately. If you lose that charge, it's hard to get a piece to the side. And it's the worst feeling. And as low as Eli is, he'll knock this out. Most of these top-level players can single and double on 19 with comfort. Especially at that low level. And Rigel advances to 19. He's down about three Tetrises, but he's clean, and he's in it. And with style, Eli takes round one. Nice job. Good match. Nice pace. Nice pace. A max-out pace 
is really any th a transition score. Now, when, when you hear the term transition score, that means when they transition from the 18 speed to the 19 speed, and any score at that point above 500 is what we might call a max out pace. Rigel's in trouble. Oh. All right. Well, with Chris a 100,000 point lead, Chris advances to round two. Good job, Chris. All right, next I want to invite to the stage Joey Parker and Pre Peter Grisafi. This is our 15 versus 18 matchup. This should be good. And, and both Peter and Joey have been in those middle seeds. They're veterans of the middle seeds, which is a war zone. Those middle seeds. There's fact, a lot of. In fact, this is a rematch from last year. So we might be building up a rivalry. Now, uh, we haven't filled in our hearts, but Eli is ahead 1-0 to zero down here on the bottom. SQR with a nice T-spin slide there. A little drought to start the match already. Nice burn, and boom, Tetris for SQR. So Peter and Joey are going to warm up here a bit. Nice spin for Eli. Okay, just a reminder that Peter and Joey are just practicing right now. SQR is in trouble once again with a very ugly tower in the middle of his play field. Ooh. Tough board, and oh, he's man. not going to get out of that. Oh, SQR. Wow. Sometimes 18 can just snuff you out. Even like the that. best players. So, congrats to Eli. He's going to move on to round two. And SQR, thanks so much for coming all the way from Japan. Let's give him a round of Seriously. applause. What a trip. That really means a lot to us, and it's a reminder that this truly is a Classic Tetris World, world Championship. championship. All right. And we're going to go ahead and bring to the stage the one, the only, can I get a Matt Buko? And he's going to go up against another veteran, Robin Mihara. Robin Mihara versus Matt Buko. They've been with us since the beginning. And Robin, of course, organized the original tournament in 2010. And he did not compete, but he was there. And... Matt Buko is one of the last three players who played in all eight tournaments. So a true veteran. And, in fact, the third place finisher in 2010. So Matt is trouble. And the best fan section. So Peter and Joey are getting going here. and Neck and neck count, too, by the way. Keep keeping track. And Joey has placed as high as 11th back in 2015, so he has seen round two. And same with Peter. He placed 15th in 2015, so they both have made it to the next round. Each round getting exponentially harder than the one before it. At this point, getting to the top eight, you're pretty much a Tetris legend. Both boards are so clean, it's boring. <laughs> and Peter on the right, he's a graduate of NYU, film and television. And he works as a camera technician. 
His hobbies include listening to metal, thrashing and mosh pitch, and just being an all-around cretin. And on the left, we've got Joey Parker. He is an oil and gas regu regulatory compliance employee. And he went to University of Oklahoma for meteorology and then moved on to the Air Force. And fun fact about Joey, he claims to be terrible at every other video game. While Peter is a retro gaming expert, on his Twitch channel, he's attempting to defeat every single NES game in hard mode. And his Twitch channel is called Metal Beast. Check out that channel. It's very cool. Uh, so good luck with that. Joey's built up quite a lead since we've been chatting away. That's a five Tetris lead right now. But both players do have very clean stacks. But this in this early 18 stage, you've got to get your points here because the points don't come as generously at level 19. Ooh, missed drop for Joey. Those holes are easy to clean, but you lose a lot of points because that's a lot a lot of time you're cleaning and not tetrising. So those those missed drops could cost you one or two tetrises, and that's it, a lot of points. It, even though it's not technically timed with with the kill screen, it pretty much acts as a de facto time limit. Yeah, essentially, your tetris pieces are your point producing material, and when you waste them, you lose points. But as we can see, Joey still has about a five tetris lead. He's also up by four lines, so he's playing it a little slower than Joey. So it's not the the lead isn't nearly as insurmountable as the score would indicate. Yeah, as, as you can see, if you look at the line counts, uh, Joey's about eight lines ahead, which is actually uh, about twenty pieces or so ahead. Right. So that means that uh, Peter actually has more pieces to catch up. Since, since this isn't garbage two-player Tetris, if you, you can play it slower. There's no penalty in doing that. You can play Zen style, which our champ likes to do. And, and really, playing slow is the appropriate strategy. Because not only does that mean you're playing safer, but it also means that you might get a little information about what's to come in the piece sequence. Depends on the player. Some players like play better when they're on the attack. So, And, and you will notice that Occasionally you'll see a player glance at his opponent's screen, and that is a special skill because I know if I look at the other player's screen, I would just mess up. So, <laughs> And oh, boom, Tetris for Peter, and he's got a clean board while Joey's in a little bit of trouble here. This might be the opening Peter needs to come back. And we're back to four. Uh, Matt and Robin are... Are we ready to go there, or are they warming up? And, and Robin has competed in every tournament since 2011. I believe in 2011 he was third. There's some controversy there. We have to look back at the tape. Either Harry or Robin was third. I had the honor of losing to him in 2013, was it? I, which, which year I was here on the stage. We had, we had a fun little trash talk session on Facebook the night before. And Joey just transitioned to 19. He had a, a bit of a bad piece placement there with the long bar. Okay, we just got worried that Harry Hong won. Congrats to Harry. He's moving on. Joey just topped out. And now Peter, as you can see, has an 88,000-point deficit. And he's nearly at the 19 transition. So he'll have to do some good Tetris to overcome that. So we're going to go ahead and call up Jonas Neubauer and Mary Powell to the side station. The champ is here. And Peter is looking good with a nice clean wall. He's got 50,000 more points. He's going to play it safe. Not going for Tetris's unless it comes easy. I have seen kinder piece sequences. He's handling it well. Nice. Clean again. Coasting in. He's got 35,000 left to go. About 1,000 points per single line. So if you 
take that conservative route. It might take a little while, but that's the safe play right now. Joey was in control of that match, and you can see how quickly things turn in this game. And it looks like Robin and Buko have gotten started there on the bottom. And uh, somewhat unusually, they chose level 15. So the higher seed gets the pick for round one. So that must mean Matt chose level 15. No? Oh, oh. My mistake. So uh, this is round two, and Robin chose level 15. Matt already took round one. So... And Peter Seven, would up 7,000 to go for Peter. And Joey has the grim look of defeat in his eyes. But there's still two more matches to go. Okay. Nice there work. Peter takes it. Now, let me tell you, Peter made that look easy. But to be up here on this stage and score 80,000 points in level 19 with singles and doubles, that's a lot of pressure. This is not a Twitch stream. That you're you're live in front of an audience. You tighten up, no matter how good you are. And if any of you have any doubts about the skill level of these players, I invite you to go buy a Nintendo <laughs> and buy a Tetris cartridge and play this game at level 18, let alone level 19. You won't get very far. And that's the thing. When the players are this good, they make it look easy sometimes. Uh, it's, it's mesmerizing. Robin's got an unconventional Tetris well going here. He's going to need a straight piece to get this garbage cleaned up. He was forced to take a rough burn there, create a hole. He needs a little bit of help. Looking he, better. He does have a, a two-and-a-half Tetris lead. But Matt with a clean wall and just got a Tetris. That square piece will All do right. it. That's clean. Boom. Tetris for Robin. Nice cleanup. That's a high-pressure situation, even on level 15, to be that high and have a bad piece sequence like that. You, you tend not to want to go above the middle of the board, even on 15, the little versus sign. The DAS is just too slow unless you can master the double tap, and that's going to wear you out if you're doing that the entire game. That's a point. Yeah, unless you're a, a master of the hyper tap, like Corian or Thor, when you're at up, you know, two thirds of the way up the board, you're in constant danger. And even if you are a master, you don't want to do that for minutes at a time. You want to save that for emergency situations. And Robin with the Tetris, he's in the lead now. Joey's in trouble already. He might be able to get out of this. Nice. Wow. Wait, wait. Not quite, but he's getting there. Oh. Oh, RN Jesus was not kind. So close. That was a really valiant attempt to clean that up, but it was just a little too high. And now Peter's back in the driver's seat. He just needs to get 29,000 more points. And he's in a comfort zone, not going to see 19. And Robin has a solid lead, but he continues with some strange builds here. He's keeping Portland weird, that's for sure. But once again, he cleans it up. All right, and Peter takes it. Well done. So, congratulations on Peter to advancing to round two. And Joey, so good to see you. And we hope to see you next year. Now, I want you to notice that Robin is actually 14 lines ahead. So even though he's ahead in score, Matt does have 
a lot of lines to catch up and get some more points. And you'll notice Robin's on level 17, which, boy, that's an ugly color scheme. All right, I'd like to call to the stage Mike Winzenek and Sean Miller. Now, Mike Winzenek was our runner-up in 2012, so he's dangerous. He's a former Nintendo World Champion finalist, if I'm not mistaken. We have a big club here. And uh, anytime you go up against a 1990 Nintendo World Champion, you're not messing around. That person has been on the stage when they were a 13-year-old kid, so they know how to make it count in the moment. Ooh, missed drop for Robin. That might be trouble. He didn't have Das for that long bar, but he has it now. Nope. Ooh. Okay. A five Tetris lead at this point. Buko should be able to handle it, but stranger things have happened. Yeah, solid, sh solid showing for Robin with a lot of adversity, a lot of bad piece sequences, a lot of cleaning up high. And his score isn't a great score, but I think he played some great Tetris during that round. Well, you can, Buko's one of the better players here, and he's struggling with this piece arrangement too. So since they're both getting the same pieces, you can see that it, it's affecting both games. And you'll see with piece sequences like this, it's both players didn't fare well. Tetris for Buko. Four to go. Yeah. So up against Mike Winzenek, we've got Sean Miller. Can we get Sean Miller to the stage? Robin is waiting patiently. Matt with a very clean wall. He plays it safe. Boom, Tetris for there. Matt. One more should take it. And, so and boom, there Tetris for Matt. Well, one, but two, 2,000 more, not quite, almost. All he needs is 2,000 points. There it is. Nice. Matt takes the match. Congratulations. And thanks again, Robin. Quick reminder that Robin was third place at the 1990 Nintendo World Championships. So a gaming legend slain by Matt Bucco. All right, so next up to the stage is our very own tech director, Trey Harrison, as the sixth seed, versus the one and only Kevin DDR Burrell. And I might be mistaken, but I believe Kevin Burrell is the only Tetris the Grandmaster Three Grandmaster in the North America. Yes. And so another multidisciplinary Tetris wizard in our midst. And Kevin made it to the Tetris Grandmaster final yesterday, and it was a thrilling event. We're going to post that video on YouTube eventually here in the next couple weeks. Uh, that was a barn burner. Uh, be sure to check that out. And up here, Mike and Sean are warming up. We're still waiting for some news from the side. I think there's been some good matches over there. Jeff over Frank. So Jeff Moore has defeated Frank. Westfall. All right, nice work, Frank. Frank uh, is another Nintendo World Champion who holds the world record on the Nintendo World Championship reproduction carts. So what you see our people who are falling off like flies all have gaming championships and records. It's incredible. So, And uh, Sean and Mike have started their match. Chad. And over to the side, I'd like to invite Chad Muse 
the 11th seed versus Sam Perry, number 22. All right, a couple words about Trey Harrison. He also participated in the 1990 Nintendo World Championships, and he's been with us every year. Last year, he placed fifth, so a very dangerous player. Uh, Kevin also has been known to make, NES is not a specialty, but Kevin has been known to make some noise in these championships. He doesn't go down without a fight. So we should see some good action there on that bottom screen. All right, over on the side, Jonas has won his first match against Mary Powell. Thank you, Mary. It's a tough task to take on the six-time champ. An unenviable position. And we're down to our final matches of round one. We have Chad and Sam on the side. We've got Trey and Kevin on stage. We've got Mike and Sean on stage. I believe we've started up top. Sean has the slight lead and a little bit of garbage. Mike has an extremely clean board. And he scored a Tetris to make it a half Tetris deficit. We're waiting for Trey and Kevin to start on the bottom. They're about to go here. The, the face cams are great. Everybody is so intense in concentration. And I try not to make the players smirk too much, but it's kind of fun to do that every once in a while as long as I don't affect the outcome. That's an uh, interesting hole for Sean. That's going to take some work to clean up. Mike is about to take the lead with a Tetris. That once he gets that line piece, he's got an extremely clean well. And there it is. Trey has a half Tetris lead on the bottom. Kevin has an unconventional left side well, but he doesn't want to make that too much higher. He might need to start burning pieces, and he just did. And boom, that's for Kevin. And Mike has the Hauser well going. Boom, Tetris for Mike. Uh, uh, Hauser well? I was told this by my co host who went to the bathroom, so. Uh, who? Okay, gotcha. Another Tetris for Mike. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
they sent a courier to the town to bring it to the town of Bethel. Mike has transitioned. He's got a four Tetris lead. Sean is in trouble a bit, but he's going to clear that out with a Tetris. Trey is up by three Tetrises, four Tetrises. He's got a very clean board. Kevin has got some work to do to catch up. It's kind of hard to keep track of four games at once, but we've gone into the transition up top. Sean with a boom tet up. Oh, now we're now we're a one Tetris deficit for Sean. Plus he's playing a little slower, giving him a slight advantage. Kevin has topped out. Trey has taken round one. That, that looked like a tough piece sequence for those guys. They were both having a little bit of trouble. And uh, Mike just topped out, but Sean's got an issue here, so he, he needs a Tetris to win this, and I don't know. He can't get it. Oh. Oh, brutal, but ooh. Close match. 450 to 429. All right, so Mike goes up one. Down at the bottom, Kevin has decided to pick level 15, and it's paying off so far. He's got a very clean board. He's got a half Tetris lead. Nope, not now. Now it's a neck and neck. That's three if you're counting. Up top, Sean's got an unconventional well when he cleared that out with a Tetris. Mike is in some trouble right now. At that height, you got to get that stuff cleared out quick. And with the proper pieces, it can be done, but you got to rely on the random pattern. That might help. Tetris for Sean, a one Tetris lead. Kevin had to use a long piece to burn a line rather than score a Tetris, but they both have both players have clean wells. Triple for Sean. Mike with the clean well. Keeping that stack below the versus line. Not taking risks this early. No panic for either player yet. Both Kevin and Trey have a bit of a mess going on. Kevin's going to have an interesting choice if he gets a line peak. Oh, now he has his unconventional well. And Tetris for Kevin. Whoops, only 6,000 points behind. Mike has a big, interesting swimming pool there in the middle of his play field. He's going to have to clean out. Sean has a Tetris. There it is. Boom, Tetris for Sean. 
and a nice clean out there with a nice commanding lead it, it with uh, about 40 lines to go for transition. Yeah, Sean's in a good position right now. Almost three Tetrises ahead, clean wall, and Mike's got some cleanup to do. So, And in addition, Sean's ahead by lines, like you were saying. So, Way more efficient. This drop by Mike, he's going to have to work this. Okay, he got that. The, the sl he slid it over in time. Boom, Tetris for Sean. Expanding his lead to 100,000. Still clean, nice setup. Got a close Boom. match at the bottom. Tetris for Sean. He's on a roll, he's on fire. Boom, Tetris. That's three Tetris in a row. Sean, up by 130,000 points. And Mike's dealing with a long bar drought. As you, to remind you, there you look at 18. Oh, there it goes. So that was the end of the drought. Trey's got a nice clean wall. And Kevin with a little bit of cleanup. Boom, Tetris for Trey. Expands his lead to 67,000. Boom, Tetris again Another. for Trey. So that's what happens in these games. If you're cleaning up and your opponent's getting Tetrises, that's how you get behind. Sean is very clean, and he's now he has a commanding seven Tetris lead, nearing the transition to level 19, where the Tetrises are no longer gimmies. And another Tetris for Sean, 200,000 point lead. Mike has cleaned up quite a bit, and his 19 game is looking solid. He's going to need to take some risks at this point, although he does have a match to give, so it might be worth it to take those risks. Down at the bottom, Kevin has a double well. He's going to fill that in. Oh, and he's clean and looking good. So he's finally found a good place here where he can try to score some Tetrises. And not an insurmountable gap. He's only down about four Tetrises. And we're getting to the point where the level 19 transition is coming up for the bottom. And Mike has topped out. Boom, Sean is taking Kevin. it. Nice nice comeback. Nice match up top. A little back and forth. I think this is our first um, rubber match of the first round on stage. And boom, Tetris for Trey. Keeps his lead up into the healthy uh, five Tetris zone there. Both players are even line-wise. They're about to transition to level 19, so he, both players have the stack slow. You know, as we move to this, to this transition, I want to mention that uh, Kevin has a long career behind him as a pinball champion. Mm. I believe he was ranked in the top 10 at one point. And uh, currently on hiatus from pinball, but the guy is just the monster on any game he tries to learn, so... We hope to see him at more NES championships. Pinball players tend to play Zen, very letting the game come to them, not pushing too hard because you can't control the physics too much. You can nudge them, but you can't control them. And in a game like Tetris, you just play what's given to you. You can't push all the time, or at least that's his success for successful strategy. Trey missed the T-spin. He's in trouble now with that disgusting well. Ooh, Ooh. Top out for Trey. Okay, a change of fortune. Now Kevin has a chance to uh, score 100,000 points, 103,000. He can keep it low, but he's probably going to want a couple Tetrises. Yeah, he, he can't strictly go for singles. He's going to need some doubles and triples uh, to make sure he scores enough points. We're but about 25,000, 26,000 for a Tetris at this point with a 93,000 point deficit. And time is running out. Yeah, both players had some rough patches. Another slightly unkind piece sequence uh, caused both players a little bit of trouble on and off throughout the game. Uh, but now Kevin's clean and he's coasting but along. He don't have time to do 83 singles. He's going to have to start getting some multiples. And that's a miss drop. Mm, nice L-spin there. And a lot of times you'll notice when these players are in desperate straights, they'll do a spin or a tuck. That might blow you away. So you got to keep your eyes peeled to catch those because, like you said, it's a two-frame window. Yeah. And that's where those... There's a triple. That'll help. 
69,000 point deficit. Two Tetrises will do it. Okay, th this is intense. Some great Tetris being played. Trey is safe with that win in his pocket. And the unconventional well is actually a valid strategy at the higher speeds because you don't have to dash your straight line all the way across. Okay. Did he get that over? Yes. Ooh. If that had been one higher, it wouldn't have made it over without a double tap. That was a, he just pulled off a double tap. Did you notice that? I, I'm too, it's hard to watch everything at one time. Oh, no. Oh. That is going to do it. Kevin, nice work. That was, now there, there you see. One drop, one missed drop. One error can end it, you guys. It's amazing what these guys do. And now, speaking of, Mike's pretty high, fighting for his life. And. Oh, no. They, one piece difference. Ooh. Sean takes it. And up top, Sean, I believe he takes the match. Nice work, Sean. And Mike, we always love to have you. And that's the end of